We are on Path Integration Part 9, the prequel. And in the prequel, we're going to talk about the LSC formula. Basically, think of it as like this, okay? Ready, watch. Uh, can I do the, can I do a little trick with this, I wonder? Um, the general gist of everything, it is what it is. Now, this is a classical demonstration, so it's not the best thing. But what we don't really care about is what's happening on the inside. We only really care about what's happening that after, like before and after, okay? And this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what happens before at some negative infinity versus what happens at some negative uh, or some positive infinity. Okay, so what we're talking about is now having like a particle interaction. Who is C.A. Nelson? Who is C.A. Nelson? Oh, that's my advisor. Um, Charles. <clears throat> now, the... Uh, the uh, it's the guy I stole all the books from. No, it's my advisor. Uh, so what we have is a uh, <clears throat> it's like we're we're talking about particles before and after some sort of interaction, right? I can get rid of this camera. This camera is not adding anything. I'm not 100 percent sure why it's here. Okay. Now. Uh, so we don't really care too much about what's going on in the interaction itself. What we care about is the beginning and the out. So if I were to take these two balls and I were to just roll them and oops, I missed. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a Feynman diagram right there. But we're not going to talk about that Feynman diagram. We're going to talk about scattering Feynman diagrams. So if they roll in and hit, then what do we get? We got two in and two out. Okay? And well, three out actually, I guess technically, if you count the one that went over that way. Right? The two went in, the one stayed. The one stayed in, the other one rolled through and made it out, and there's two blue ones that made it out as well. Let's see if I can do this again. Hold on. So that's a type of interaction. That'd be a two in and three out interaction. And like we can do the same thing with particles, right? We don't really care about how they're interacting. Everything inside is just probabilistic, right? We don't know about the wave function of the particles. We don't know about the interactions that's happening. Um. <clears throat> conservation of energy that doesn't exist <laughs> so we were to, again let's do it again now we have two blue ones and you know these oh they say words click and play what doesn't make any sense anyway so we have those you know we have a, a mess of something in here we don't know this is hidden to the observer can i hide it from you guys probably not well let's try it anyways Did that work? Yeah, pretty much. So we have some sort of mess of things that's in here that we don't know about, we don't care, but we can take two particles and put them in, and what comes out, we'll say three or four particles comes out. So two went in and four particles come out, and that's four and a half, boop. And that's kind of like what we do in particle physics when we do these paths, and we think all of the path integration stuff that we did was everything leading up to that, and that's the idea. It's like all of the possibilities of things that could happen uh, have some sort of probability of happening. And that's what P Feynman's uh, path integration tells us. So then what we can do is uh, get a formula for that. And that, and then uh, we can kind of ignore all of the stuff that's happening in the dark. Because like I said, each of the things in the dark are gonna happen and we just can find some probability that a sp specific one happened. We need to talk about, so we're on Path Integration Part 9, uh, the prequel, LSZ formalization. So in Fox Space, we used to talk about creating the state of a particle with some momentum k, right? So we could talk about the state of a particle, it has momentum k, and it's created by the following thing. Well, it's just some creation operator that acts on the ground state, okay? So we have a creation operator, acts on the ground state. And again, if you don't know, I do put these notes on Discord so you can actually go look at them and follow along. And then what is the what is the creation operator? Well, let's write it out in all of its glory. So the creation operator for a state of a particle with momentum k is gonna be given by negative i integral of d3k e to the i k x. And then there's this weird piece of symbolism that uh, Shrednicki uses. Okay. And it's basically just like, you can think of this, this is like what's happening to the particle at this spot that gives it this momentum, okay? And this, this 
that action is defined by this integral right here. Now this piece of weird looking notation is the following. Um, it means it's just, it's much simpler. It's just a derivative applied to both numbers. So if you have alpha and then this derivative and beta, that's defined by the partial or the derivative, excuse me, with, of alpha <coughs> times beta minus alpha derivative beta. Okay. So it's more straightforward than it looks like. We have zero is just some review stuff. So this is review stuff. Review. And we have the ground state. Uh, the ground state is annihilated by the uh, annihilation operator. So we have the uh, creation operator and then the Hermitian conjugate of that is the annihilation operator. So this goes to zero. So we can act on the zero state or the ground state and get a zero in return. Uh, and we actually saw this in my other video. If you want to type exclamation mark YouTube, then you can find uh, the, I did an introduction to quantum field theory where I did, uh, I did it in all in Fox space, which is what we're doing with now. So I explain it a lot more in depth there. So you can go and take a look at that if you'd like to see it. Now, what do we got next? Uh, and then of course it follows with the norm that you can act on the ground. The inner product of the ground state is just going to be one, hopefully. Uh, and then we can write a norm, a Lorenz invariant normalization of the K state. And it looks like the following. So we can have a Lorenz invariant And if you follow along on Friday, that's pretty much everything we've been doing right now is trying to figure out what's Lorenz invariant and what Lorenz invariance means on our different four vectors. So now, and that's the whole point of the special relativity. And of course, you know that quantum field theory is bringing special relativity into quantum mechanics. So we can write the ground state being acted upon two vectors. So we're going to attack the, uh, the left side with the annihilation operator and the right side with the creation operator. And this is going to give us an inner product of K and some K prime. And this is a nice normalization, except when K and K prime are not the same. So in order to do that, if you, if you want to see this again, I think this is in the video before, uh, two Omega and then a three Dirac Delta function, which preserves the fact that K and K are the same. Okay. And Omega is, uh, and Omega, we'll see that that's part of the field. That's a, just a, uh, you know, it's the part of the wave of, uh, wave, whatever I'm trying to say there, wave function one half. There we go. So that's Omega. Now, so this is about the operator that creates the state. What about an operator that creates a particle in that state? And we talked a lot about this in the video for sure. And that is definitely going to be helpful. Let's define that the operator that creates the particle, we'll call it a one that can be defined at, whoa, easy as the integral from D three K. So now we're talking about three uh, K times F one of K. And this is going to be kind of, uh, Superficially important, we'll get into a little bit. And then we need the object that creates the state of the particle as well. And then this is going to be equal to F1 of K is proportional to E to the negative K minus K prime. Oh, I'm sorry, K1, excuse me. Squared over four sigma where sigma is the width of the <clears throat> wave. Now, the wave function defining the particle. Let's get into the book though, so I can make sure that if I get stuck, I have this to look at. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> okay. So what do we have now? Well, we have to consider a state. Let's erase this stuff. 
Um, again, like if you get kind of sick of rewriting all of this stuff over and over again or whatever, you just use my notes. I will probably not leave this up for a lot because I have a lot to write today. Uh, even though today is going to be a little bit of a shorter lesson, uh, there's quite a bit of writing still. All right. Now we have to consider the state. A1 acting on the ground state, which like we said, is going to create a particle. And uh, we have to do some think thinking about this, right? So at T, just like the two uh, balls that I had in my hand that I sent into the uh, pile of balls and there was a bunch of interactions, who knows what's actually going on. And then out comes more particles, right? Inside of that action, uh, we had, we basically just assumed that the two balls came from like negative infinity in time, right? We didn't really call, we don't, we don't really care too much about when they came, when they started traveling, right? It's just more along lines where we can say like, oh, sometime in the very, very distant future, those two started coming out of nowhere. And then once they interacted, then you can say that there's, you know, the two went off into time infinity because at that point, who cares what's going on to the, with those particles? We really only care about how many particles went in and how many particles went out, okay? Um, so as the time uh, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, the wave packet will propagate and it will localize from the origin, far from the origin. Basically, the particles will come in, they'll go away. So we're going to only look at them at infinite, at infinite times, okay? So then let's talk about two particles now, okay? Eventually, we want to get back to this uh this final and initial state of the four particles that we talked about last week okay that's where we got the diagrams from where we actually got the real Feynman diagrams from um and that's what we have to get to eventually so can we talk about that sure well then consider uh two creation operators acting on a state so like we did the one acting on a state and we just said like, okay, so it's just, it could be like a particle coming from negative infinity and going to positive infinity. So now let's talk about, and at some point along the lines, it just gets created and annihilated, whatever. Now, um, let's talk about two particles. So they're going to be like this and they're going to have separate uh, momenta, right? Uh, and then there's going to be two particles. So they're going to be coming at very large distances apart in the very, very far past. Okay, so they're coming from negative infinity, they're coming from very far away, then they come together at one point in time, they interact or they scatter, and then, you know, something else comes out, and then those two particles or how many other particles come out, I think for our situation we want two in, two out, so the two particles again are going to propagate away from each other forever into the future. So, um, so what does that mean? That means that our creation of our state, so now our A delta k is now time dependent up until now it hasn't been time dependent 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 what how do you spell dependent <laughs> whatever that's got to be good enough right dependent sure okay is now time dependent, right? Because we're talking about it coming away from the negative infinity in the time and then just approaching and then interacting and going away into positive infinity. So we have to kind of figure out what those mean, okay? So is there a way we can evaluate this? Sure. Let's now establish the initial state. So we're getting closer to finding this out. This is our goal. So the initial state is going to equal the limit as time goes to negative infinity. Try spelling depends. Um, <clears throat> All right, so now we have the limit as time goes to negative infinity, and we can actually have a time component inside of this uh, arrangement right here. So we'll have the, you know, at some time this gets created, and at some times this gets created. Well, that looks ugly. There we go. And that's the initial state, okay? Now, what the final state? Well, the final state is going like the same thing. Right? Except the limit as the time goes to positive infinity of a, I think they're going to call, oh, it's still going to be one T. Now, remember, we're talking about two different things here, right? Oh, wait, they just call it one prime. Okay. And then a two prime. Good. Because I was going to say that's a little bit confusing if we don't do that. But it's the same thing, right? Some final state where, again, now we're creating the particles a one prime, or we're creating the particles one prime and two prime at some positive infinity of time. Okay. 
Uh, so the scattering of these two of these two particles with these two particles is going to be given by this. Okay, that's the goal. We got to understand that. That's what showed up last week, and we were like, "What?" And I was like, "Just roll with it." <clears throat> and the critical and critical to understanding what is going on in quantum field theory. Yes. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to erase this because the next one's a big one. If you looked at the notes, this is a pretty, this is the main beef of today's material. Once we're done with this, we're pretty much done. I know it was very fast. Short, short, short lesson today. But this one's pretty, this one's pretty long. We have to write all this stuff down. But here's the main meat of today. So what happens if we subtract a particle being created at, ne at positive infinity? minus the particle being created at negative infinity, right? Well, that's going to be equal to, and we're going to get some, like, some integral with respect to time with some time derivative of a1 delta t, or a1, sorry, dagger t. So this time is being, so basically we're saying let's integrate over all of time, um, of this particle getting created, and how, and what is that equal to? Well, it equals the, the, the subtraction between the two of them. Now, you may think to yourself, this is really weird, but it's not really this that weird, is right? one of your shortest episodes. Thank you. <laughs> but it's really not that weird, right? Like, this is, this is not too strange. This is the time derivative. This is also a derivative with respect to time. So I might see, like, this is the partial, uh, is equal to, you know, the partial of whatever, for us it's a dagger t, the partial of a dagger t with respect to time. <laughs> Let me rewrite that, because that was really sloppy. That's like saying that the partial with respect to a, we'll just say a with respect to time. So the two time derivatives we're going to cancel away, you're just going to get the integral of dA, this creation operator, right? <clears throat> so then you take the integral of that and you just evaluate at these bounds and what do we get? Well, we get this back. Okay, so it's just calculus. This is just basics of calculus. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that we can uh, now enter this into the, into the mix. So if we substitute that in, what do we get? We get negative i times the integral of d3k f1 of k times the integral of d4x delta 0 e to the i kx I don't remember my zero. calculus class when the teacher defined the partial of whatever. <laughs> yes, that's pretty funny. So here all we did was substitute in our a's, right? We had our two values of a. We had our one value of a that was creating the particle and we had the other value of a that was creating the state of that particle. Well, then we had when we define the 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 creator creation operator of the particle, we included the creation operator of the state, right? That was how that we defined the creation part the the creation operator of the particle. So, when we plug this in, we end up plugging both of the a's in. Okay, and now we'll get the following. Integral of d3k. <clears throat> so we're gonna take this, and now we're gonna actually apply this. Remember what I said this was, that means we're applying it to both sides. Oh, did we get a sub? We did it. Tom. Thanks, dude. Thank you for the prime, I appreciate that. So now what we're going to do is apply these time derivatives. Remember I said this is applying the time derivative to this as well as to this. It's just like, you know, uh, whatever it's called, the chain rule or whatnot, right? So we're going to apply that, or the product rule. Product rule? Chain rule? Product rule. I think it's a product rule. Now, so we're applying the time derivative to both of these, and then we're going to get the following. Remember there exists some, uh, I think the one part that I was struggling when I was doing this is there exists some uh, omega t in this wave packet and that this omega t is going to show up in this time derivative uh basically in the following way we're going to get d4x times 
uh, e to the i k x times the partial with respect to time squared plus omega squared times the wave function. Okay. Now what we got to do is apply a plug in this uh, omega. We know that omega is just going to be k squared, the square root of k squared plus m squared. Oh, so we're going to plug in the uh, omega. We're going to get the following minus i. I'm I'm trying to do this step by step for you, Tyrion, because you said that you hated how I didn't do things step by step sometimes. Uh, so now we have an opportunity to do everything step by step, and we're going to have a really interesting result at the end. Uh, so that's what we're doing. E to the I K X. And I also like that Shred Nikki did this step by step and explained everything uh, so I could follow it. But it did take me a minute to kind of work through all the steps. So now we're plugging in omega. Why? Well, this K is going to be relevant, right? This K, actually, you can rewrite that as the derivative of this twice. Right, because we can write, you know, the derivative with respect to um, x. So d dx of e to the i k x. Take that derivative twice, and what do we get? Well, we get, you know, minus k e to the i k x. Seems legit. So let's do it. So we can rewrite this by putting this back in, this derivative back in, and this notation is just saying that I'm acting on uh, the E, let me show you the notation, F1, K, integral of D4X, E to the I, K, X. Wait, is that still in there? Yes. Would have to be. Plus, or no, sorry, minus now, minus because of the negative. Um, the derivative uh, acting on e to the i k x, so that's what that means, plus m squared with the wave function. That's what this is, it acts on this twice and you get the k squared, so we're undoing that. Why are we undoing that? Well, we can use integration by parts. By basically isolating the derivatives and then we get to rewrite the integral, but we get to move the derivatives around a little bit. The way that we move it around is now, after integration by parts, once one step with integration by parts, we can actually get the integral to operate on the field instead of the e to the ikx. <clears throat> now what's this, you may ask? Well, here we have the derivative with respect to the time. Here we have the derivative with respect to the, or the second derivative with respect to space. So that just looks a, like a four vector derivative. Minus i integral d3k f1 of k. Let me make sure I get this right. Integral of d4x e to the negative ikx. And we, we know, right, that the derivative of space minus derivative, uh, or the derivative of time minus, with respect to time minus derivative of respect to space is going to be that four vector derivative that shows up in a very famous formula that I'm about to write. What is this formula? And it was literally like a giant crutch for doing all of the stuff we did so far. Even not even just path integration, but other stuff too. That one right there. What is it? Kaline Gordon, right? We've gone from our final to initial for our field. <clears throat> or our, I'm sorry, not from our final to an or, uh, initial. We've taken our, you know, our negative, our A1 from what is it? Negative infinity, positive infinity, positive infinity minus a negative infinity, right? And taking it all the way to our Klein Gordon equation. Which is, you know, a solution to the Klein Gordon equation is the propagator, right? The Green's function. 
that is the, the subclass of the greens function, which is the propagator. <clears throat> so for now, yeah, so we have the Klein Gordon. Um, so what does that mean? So let's go back to our initial. This was what we wanted to set out to prove or find out. We have some final states and initial states. And we want to try to figure out how to get there. So what do we get? Well, we get, we take the ground state and act on it with our A1 prime plus infinity, A2 prime, positive infinity, though this is what our final one is. And then we act, uh, and then we get created. Da, 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 da. Oh wait, what did I do? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Minus infinity. And then our initial state, which is A2 minus infinity acting on the ground state. And then, or we can rewrite this, or, Lixbugs, welcome to the channel, thank you for following. If you have any questions, feel free to exclamation mark ask, and then your question. Uh, though at this point, I'm just nodding in class, keeping my head up, awesome. Um, and so like these are already in time order, right? We have our initial and our final. So from initial states, we have negative infinities and final states, we have positive infinities. So these are technically already in time ordered. Remember our time ordering operator means we can just sort of add it because they're already time ordered. The, oh, the whole purpose of the time ordering operator is to, uh, why do I keep putting that up there? It's supposed to be down here. The whole purpose of our time ordering operator is to, you know, make sure that our particles are creating and annihilating in the appropriate order. You don't want a particle to do the wrong thing. Okay. So we add that. Now, uh, we can do one other thing. We can take that inside of that F. Remember I said that the F, F1 of K or whatever was proportional was proportional to the, and it's basically controlled the size of the wave. And uh, what did I say it was? It was negative K minus K1 over four sigma, something like that, right? And this is squared. Yeah. So that was another little identity we had to kind of take care of the F, basically controls the size of the wave. Well, if we take this sigma to be zero, i.e. we want to know exactly where the particles are and make sure that the uh, momentums are the same at a certain spot, basically the conservation of momentum for these. Then what we're going to end up getting is that this f of one of k, this turns into a Dirac delta function in three space, right? So what does that mean? So now we get our final form. Uh, we can substitute in all of our a's that we had before. Uh, all we have to do, the difference between this and this is we have to take this one right here, we'll pull it into there, okay? Our time ordering makes all of these annihilate away. So when we pull this over to this side, actually I think we're gonna end up moving this over here and, and negating everything. So we'll pull this over to here, negate the whole thing. So now we want this right here, A1, uh, A1 negative infinity, so we'll plug this in. This is gonna end up getting pushed over to the zero state and annihilating, so that will go away. That's nice. Uh, wait a second. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. This it's gonna. This is a creation operator. It's gonna get pushed over to this one because of time ordering. The positive infinity is gonna make it act on this, on this ground state, which will take it to zero. So that's good. That will get rid of that extra term. So all we'll be left with is just this is equal to this. Okay. So now plugging all of those in. <clears throat> so finally, we get our last equation. And hopefully this one will look very familiar. We're going to be plugging in all of our A's that look like this. The F1s are now just the Dirac Delta. So they are gonna be going to, they're gonna be, we're gonna be preserving our K going to K prime or K1, excuse me. Uh, we're gonna be preserving that to make sure that we don't get zeros everywhere. And we'll get the following, I to the N plus N prime, because we have a lot of different particles now floating around. We're gonna make this as general as possible. We get dx to the fourth for e, oh, sorry, this is one, e to the i, this is it, guys, we're almost done, k1, x1, and then our Klein-Gordon assigned to that particle, 
dot dot dot. So we're going to take all of the pos all the particles going in. Remember, this is general, so we're talking about all initial particles entering and all initial particles exiting. So you can talk about four particles in and out, two particles in and out, two particles in and three particles out. Blah blah blah. Okay, there's Feynman diagrams for every every of it, all of it. They exist, and you guys know how to do it. Times. I think it's times. I kind of wrote. I forgot to write down that uh, that expression. <clears throat> yes, it's times. Times, because he also forgot to write down. It looks like one prime to the fourth e to the negative i, because it's the conjugate. Loud noises, and then the associated Klein-Gordon equation for these particles that 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 and now one thing is is the time operator is an operator so it has to be applied to states <clears throat> and if it's applied to the states like these creators then it can get worked through everything except one thing which is this field that's not quite done with the fields the field the last one is time zero times the time ordering operator of now all of the fields. And I ask you, these are, remember, when we get to the path integration, <clears throat> we end up evaluating this. All of the path integration was to take care of that thing. And in doing so, in taking care of this time ordering operation, this is the beauty of the path integration formalism. In taking care of this time ordering operator, we ended up turning all of these klein gordon equations into solvable problems. They all came with a propagator, which meant that we were able to use the klein gordon times the propagator to get a delta function. The delta function took care of all of these E's, and we were left with nothing but a bunch of real propagators. Ta-da! Path integration! We did it! Part nine wraps it up. We did it. Now we have everything we need to talk about any amount of particles coming in. And this is all for phi cube theory. And you can do the extensions in uh, to, to, the other theory. So if you want to do like a fermionic field, you would need Dirac equations instead of Klein-Gordon and, and whatnot. And all of that stuff is laid out. <clears throat> but we did it. <laughs> where do I focus? Right here. This is where we focus. This is the beast. This is known as the LSZ reduction formula. This time ordering thing of all the fields, you need to solve it using either the canonical method or the path integration method. One of those methods solves that and beauty ensues. Big cannonball, welcome. <clears throat> How are you? It's very impressive, but I'm gonna be honest, it's beyond me. Well. Uh, it was beyond me for a long time, even though it was my field of study. It took me many times to go through before I finally understood most of it. And even so, I think that sometimes I talk to people like Justin and other people, and my professor and other people, and they t say things that I just never thought of before. After going through this material like five or six times, they just say stuff. And I'm just like, you know what? That's right. Holy smokes. I never even thought of that. So don't think that this stuff is going to be something you can just look at one time through. Expect to be done. You will have to work through some of this exercises yourself. You'll have to prove some of this stuff to yourself to yourself. You'll have to take some partial derivative with respect to whatever. Who knows? And ultimately, at the end, you will have this beautiful. Now explain it with entropy. <laughs> All right, path integration with entropy part one. Let's start. <laughs> Taking massive amounts of theoretical stuff and turning it into something that you can use with real applications is very good. And that's the crazy part about this. I don't think people realize this. Like, they see nothing but numbers and stuff. But, like, we're at a state where we talked... Like, this is Chapter 5 of Shred Nikki. This is the first thing you do. Then you have to figure out what to do with this time-ordering equation. And there, like I said, there's two methods, okay? There's either the canonical method, where you take Wick's theorem as, like, something that you prove once, and then from then on, Wick's theorem is really good. 
or there's the path integration method, which is a lot less hand wavy, very rigorous, very non-intuitive. And you go through with all of the formulations and you get these beautiful propagators and nice diagrams and stuff to calculate everything. And all of this other junk, this fluff, this klein gordon equation, slash these exponents and everything and integrating over all of them, blah, blah, blah. They all go away. And you get this beautiful, like, nice thing, right? So what, what's the big deal, Eric? Come on, Eric, what's the big deal? Right? Like, we don't, this isn't, this isn't reality. Wrong. This is the exact thing that is done to explain the um, elect the, what is it? The um, magnetic dipole of an electron to like 12 decimal places, theoretically and experimentally agreed, right? Like this is theoretical and this is experimental. And they're like, 